So I have not written even one line of code yet. This is really all it takes. I just have four notes. I say run, pass the URL, and ask a question. What is the most important item on the agenda in this meeting? And we already get our answer. The most important item on the agenda is proposal number four. And we have a bit more information about it. Earlier this year, Ironclad open sourced their graphical development environment for AI applications, Rivet. It is a great environment to prototype AI applications without any code. Especially if you're building complex apps with multiple services combined, it is great to have this visual aspect. You can also integrate the graphs you build in Rivet directly into your projects, applications, or products. Let's see how you can build a graph in Rivet using some of their plugins. Not surprisingly, the first thing that you have to do is to install Rivet on your laptop. Once you've done that, you're going to have an environment like this. Um, the text might be too small to see right now, but I'll make sure to go uh, slow to make sure you, you can uh, follow along because uh, I cannot make the text bigger, at least in the interface. So at first you're going to see the project name, description, and other things. Um, I named this project Q&A with Assembly AI because I'm going to build a project where we can uh, give the application a URL to an audio file and then we're going to be able to ask a question about this audio file and get an answer as a, a text format. Um, once you've done that, you wanna make sure that you add the Assembly AI plugin. So there are a bunch of plugins here. Uh, Assembly AI is one of the um, first ones that we can see here. All you have to do is say add. And once that's installed, you need one more step, which is to get a Assembly AI API key. So for that, if you haven't done so, you can go to assemblyai.com and create an account. If you already have an account, you can log into your dashboard and then you can copy your token here. And then we're going to go to the canvas again, go to settings, plugins, and paste our assembly AI API key. Let's take a look at the structure before we get started. So um, this is a project and a project consists of multiple graphs. So right now we only have one graph called an untitled graph, but we're going to build something slightly bigger in a second. All right, let's start with a simple example. So if you want to add an audio file, for example, you can say data audio file, or maybe I'll make it a bit bigger here. And then I can add a assembly AI node transcribe audio and all I need to do is to connect the audio data to the audio input of assembly AI. So to pass an audio file, you can just pick a file here. Um, for example, the Gettysburg address, I think a very short version of it. And when a node is running, you're going to see this orange glow around the node. And then we have the transcript object returned. So what you get is the whole transcript object, so the whole response that is returned. You have the transcript ID and the transcript text here. This is a very short file, I think is around uh, five, ten seconds. So that's why we get a very trans short transcript text. So let's see how to build a full-blown project around this. So I'll just delete these. Um, I'm going to have three graph. So if I delete this graph, I can right click and create a new graph. So the first one will be transcribe audio. The second one will be answer questions. And then I'm going to have a main graph. I can just call this Q&A on audio, for example. So let's do transcribe audio first. So these are all separate graphs. And in each of these graphs, you can think of it as kind of like a function. We're going to do only one thing. So in the transcribe audio part, I'm going to add a graph input through input and output. So graph input means uh, instead of going and uploading the audio directly, I can get this input from outside of this graph into this graph. Uh, maybe rename this as audio input. And then this will be an audio URL and it will be a string. Again, I'm adding a assembly AI transcribe audio. Uh, you can either pass audio files or audio URLs to assembly AI. So I'm going to pass this. Um, the name is fine, so I don't need to change that. This is going to be audio transcription. 
let's see, yes, I can move them like this. And this time we only need the transcript ID. So what I'm going to do, maybe if I zoom in so you can see it better, I'm going to add a graph output from input and output, graph output. I'm going to get the transcript ID from this assembly AI node and then output that. Then I can call this transcript ID. I also call it transcript ID here. So the only job of this graph is going to be taking a audio URL and outputting the transcript ID. So let's set up the answer question section. Again, I need an input for this graph. And the first one is going to be transcript ID input. And what we're going to get, like we specified in the other graph, is going to be transcript ID. And then another input. And this input is going to be a question. So it will be question input. I will just simply call this a question. Again, it's going to be a string. Next, I'm going to add a lemur Q&A node. The transcript ID is going to go into the transcript ID and the question is going, in, going to go into the question. If you want, you can even provide extra context for this question uh, when you're setting it up, but we only want to collect um, two inputs from the user this time, the question and the order URL. So as a response, we're going to get the JSON object like we've seen before. Um, but I want to show you what the JSON object looks like before we parse into it. So I'm just going to create a graph output and we're going to output the response directly. Um, I'll just call this the JSON response. All right, so now we have two separate graphs. So like I said, we can think of them as two separate functions. We're going to call them together in our main function. So we're going to need two user inputs. The first user input is going to be the audio URL. We're going to say, please provide a URL linking to to an audio file. Second input from the user is going to be a question. And we're going to say, what do you want to know about this audio? So when we run this graph, this main graph, uh, the user is going to be prompted to answer these questions. Next, I'm going to add a subgraph node. So you go to advanced and then subgraph. Inside the settings, you're going to select which graph you want. So first we want the transcribe audio graph. If you want, you can specify an audio URL also in here. I think that's going to be the default value. And then I'm going to get the answer from the audio URL user input into my transcribe audio subgraph. And then it's time to create another subgraph. Again, add advanced subgraph. And this time I'm going to call the answer question subgraph. Like I said, again, you can specify a default value for these two inputs, but we're going to get the transcript ID from the other subgraph and the question from the user input for the question. And this way we should be able to get the JSON response to this question. So let's see what happens when I run it. So first it's asking me for a audio file to a URL to an audio file. I have a URL to a news report uh, that is around 20 minutes long. And my question will be, what is the two most important items in this news report? All right, let's submit it. And now at first the transcription is running. 
Oh, and then we get an error. So one thing um, that you might want to do when you get unexpected errors is to change your executor. So by default, it's going to be the browser executor, but there is another option, which is a Node.js executor. Some of the functionalities for the plugins might not work for the browser executor uh, for safety reasons. So let's change it to Node and then see that everything works well. I'm going to submit the same inputs. Now the subgraph for answering questions is running and we got a response. So let's see what the response looks like. We have a JSON object or a dictionary, if you want to call it that way, uh, of an answer and a question. So we know what our question is and let's make it bigger. We also know what our answer is. The answer is based on the transcript. The two most important items on the news report appear to be, and then it gives us uh, a list of what the two most important news items is. So to fix that, to fix what that looks like, what we can do, I'll just remove this graph input. So to extract the answer from the response that we get, we can use another node. I think it was here. Yes, objects, extra, extract object path. Um, I'm going to send the response in here. I'll say extract answer. And then um, let's see what our response looked like first. So we have, if we have, if you ask multiple questions, we're going to get multiple responses, but we want to ask one question so far. So as we see, it's going to be a list and then inside there's going to be a answer key. So let's parse it accordingly. We're going to get the first element and inside we're going to want to get the answer from it. And then I will add a graph output and connect the match into the graph output. I call this output the answer and it's going to be the answer. All right, so let's come back to Q&A on audio. And yeah, now we see that the output is going to be the answer. So let's run this again. Same audio file, same question. All right, let's look at the answer. Now we have it a little bit um, better formatted also. So based on the transcript, the two most important items in the news appear to be the heat wave impacting large parts of the United States, the arrest made in the Gilgo Beach murders case on Long Island. Okay, that sounds serious. And that's how simple it is to get answers to your questions based on an audio file uh, with Rivet using Assembly AI's plugin. If you want, you can also use these graphs that you made directly in a Node.js project. Uh, I will not go into the details of that in this video to save time. You can take a look at this amazing tutorial made by one of my colleagues, Niels. Uh, where he goes through basically the same thing that we went through on this video and then also explains how to uh, integrate these graphs in a Node.js project and you will also have access to the code if you go and take a look at the blog post. I will make sure to leave a link in the description below. It's getting easier and easier to set up these AI applications. But one of the key things that you need to learn is how to prompt these models to get the response that you want. If you want to get better at prompt engineering, you can go take a look at this course made by Patrick on our channel.